Good morning, good afternoon, folks. Thank you for joining us on this Intune Advanced and Premium webinar. I have the immense pleasure this morning of having Stephen De Quincey join me on this. My name is Dennis O'Shea. I'm the founder of Mobile Mentor. Stephen is the principal product manager at Microsoft for Intune. And I can tell you you're in for a treat because Stephen is probably one of the most knowledgeable people on the planet when it comes to Microsoft Intune. Stephen, do you want to say a couple of words and introduce yourself? Yes, thanks, Dennis. Um, morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Thanks for thanks for joining. Yeah, uh, Stephen De Quincey. I'm a principal product manager on the Intune engineering team. Um, my role inside engineering is really to work with our partner ecosystem for kind of two main objectives. You know, make sure that our customers get the best experience through our partners who are crucial to our business. But then secondly, make sure that the feedback that our customers give our partners and our partners give us goes back into our engineering development cycle. So, you know, we're in engineering for a reason to make sure that we're, we're building products that our, our customers and partners are asking for. Thank you, Stephen. And speaking of engineering, one of the personal highlights in my career is uh, being on the advisory board on the uh, partner advisory council to the Microsoft product line. That's how I got to know Stephen. So for the last couple of years, I've had some privileged insight and a little bit of influence on what's happening with Intune. So I feel like I have a little bit of an emotional investment in, in all the good things that are coming out from the Intune product line. And, and many of you on the call this morning um, have already worked with, uh, with Intune. Some of you are well deployed. Some of you might just be starting. Some of you might be wondering, where do you go next? And some have probably already worked with our team at Mobile Mentor, maybe with Steven's team in the background to, to get to where you are. So this is for you. This is to give you uh, an insight into what's coming uh, and to talk about the background and the motivation for developing some of the features you're going to hear about and give you an indication of the release timeframe. Some of the things you're going to hear about are available now or will be in the next few weeks. Some will be later in the year. And so hopefully this will give you the ability to think ahead and figure out what your rollout schedule is going to look like this year, where you can consolidate some of the tool sets you've got in and around endpoint management and how you can leverage some of these capabilities. So we've kind of broken the, the, the new features into two categories. There's features that will enhance security, endpoint security, and then there are some that will improve the employee experience. We're going to start with security and let's start with um, let's start with the endpoint privilege management because that's a, a super exciting feature, EPM as that's known. And Stephen, let's let's talk about where this came from. And I guess the starting point here is every organization has to make this ugly choice between giving their employees full admin access so they can be productive and use the applications they want to use, but they're yeah. taking an enormous security risk in doing so. Or they say, no, you don't get admin access and call the service desk every time you want to do something unusual or something new. Talk to us about how you're going yeah. to, how you're tackling and, that. And I mean, that, that, that dilemma exists everywhere, right? And it's kind of a, it's almost an inversely proportionate balance between user productivity and IT security, and then overburdening IT, as you say, with all of those, those service desk requests. Um, and prior to my time in Microsoft, you know, I, I used to work in the customer realm as well. And, you know, it's, it's a really common problem that we see where, um, you know, organizations do what they need, what they can to try and find this balance. Either they package all of the apps um, or in some instances they give users administrative access. And what we see with that, that admin access, as you say, Dennis, it's a it's a big risk. You've got risk of lateral movement. You've got risk of people installing malicious software. You've got compliance risks of applications being installed that actually, you know, no one's been through any privacy or legal framework to ensure that they should be installed. And you might give someone admin access because they've said, look, there's this app, I'm a developer, say, and I really need to install this app. But then how often do you go back and make sure that you've revoked that admin access? And then when they get a new laptop and you have to do it all over again, right? So so IT, mm -hmm. IT orgs are always trying to strike that balance between how do we make sure that our users can do what they need to do, but we're also balancing the security risks of the organization by not giving them um, administrative access. So. We're launching as part of Intune Suite um, endpoint privilege management. Uh, what this will let an IT pro do is essentially define a set of applications or, or executables, you know, kind of anything really that is interacting with the OS that might need administrative access. Define those applications, and there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can either do that through a file hash, um, high maintenance to maintain, you know, file hashes change, but it's a way, or you can do it through um, certificates. So, you know, signed applications 
applications by particular vendors, for example. Um, you define the applications then that you want to be able to run as, admi as an administrator. And then the second thing you'll define is um, how you want that escalate that elevation, I should say, to administrator mm. experience to look like for a user. So mm. some applications you might say, you can always run these as an administrator. Others you might ask for a business justification for. So, yeah. you know, someone needs to just type in some text. Um, and then coming in the future, we'll build some additional capabilities in that elevation process as well. So it might be that we ask the user to go through MFA, second factor authentication. Yeah. And finally, maybe a, a, a workflow that goes to a service desk person to approve that request, you know, kind of asynchronously. Um, yeah. But in terms of then what that looks like for the end user, um, the end user stays a, stays a standard user. You don't give yeah. them administrative yeah. access. You don't need to give them any credentials. And what they'll do is they'll right click on an application, say run as um, elevated user, we check against the rules that have been downloaded to, to the client, and if they, if that application is one of the ones to be elevated with the relevant elevation process that we talked about, we'll then run that application one time as an administrator. So, you know, maybe it's a piece of application, an application they just need to install, install once, yeah. forget about it, can run it as a standard user from then on. Um, so then essentially short term, just for that executable to be an admin administrator to install. Awesome. And so my understanding is there's, there's three ways this will happen. Some some will be automatic, depending yep. on the application, how it's been signed. Some will be user initiated. So the user will request it and say, I need this app to do a specific task for a duration yep. of time. And then some will be approved by support. It'll go to the IT service desk and they will click to approve or deny. That, yeah. That's coming yep. in the future. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, that's coming in the future. And the <laughs> other thing we're also building is some reporting capability as well. So, um, you know, you could think about this as you'd have to go out and audit and find all of those applications that people are running as an administrator, which is often one of the reasons <laughs> you see <laughs> legacy admin users in the estate, because how do you, yeah. you know, how do you go about who really needs administrative access and who doesn't? Um, so in the future, you'll see capability where will show you the applications that are running as administrators in the estate so you can essentially create your rules based on what's actually happening in your estate okay so that's going to be really helpful for security audits where it yeah. might be very hard today to know who's got admin access who's got elevator privileges and why. you'll be able to yeah and you'll yeah. be able to produce that as a report and then figure out do we have too much creep going on do we need to pull back some of this or can we justify the 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 privileges we've given. Yeah, it's, it's essentially it's so that you can use that you can use the report of what apps are running as in admin context to create yeah. your rules and then revoke admin access, knowing that you're not going to impact that user's productivity. Awesome, awesome. That's great. Yeah, I think that's going to be a that's going to be very popular. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and it's a challenge that has existed for let's say decades probably yeah you know yeah, this yes. admin yeah, standard yeah, yeah. user you know and yeah. and we want we we've built it because we talk about our zero trust security model yeah. um least privilege know, access le least privilege assume breach you know Just always verify exact exactly all of that um but as soon as you give someone an admin access on their local pc you've kind of yeah. a big punched a big hole in that yeah. so yeah. yeah yeah this this will help you readdress that balance I can see this being very popular in specific industries where there's an expectation that users get admin access. And that's been mm -hmm. the expectation for a long time, almost an entitlement. Yes. So, yeah. This is going to help put How the cat back. In, yeah. yeah. Good. This will put the cat back in the bag. Um, this is great. And at the end, we'll talk about how people can get started, how people can get trial okay. licenses to start testing some of this stuff. Yeah. Um, let's move on. The, the The objective of this morning, by the way, is is a short, fast, compact, concise webinar and to pack in as much information as possible in about 30 minutes. So moving on to advanced app management. This is a feature I'm super excited about because what I see to today's reality out there and most of our customers today is they still have some legacy apps on SCCM. They've got some on Intune and they're being auto updated. They've got some on Patch My PC to get more auto updating happening. Um, it's it's a bit of a mishmash. Um, so talk to us about what, what what we look forward what to seeing see. in the future. Yeah. yeah. So so I think um we're really going to try and address two key problems with our application management feature. The first one is application packaging. 
So, you know, we have hundreds of millions of devices using Intune every day across thousands of customers, and we see a common set of applications that every customer goes through a packaging exercise on. You know, so there's a big duplication of effort there where yes. an IT pro has to go and get mm -hmm. the binaries, they need to know what the install switches are, they need to create the application, and then they need to deploy it and monitor that deployment. So that's kind of problem one. And then problem two for that is, an application has an update, um, you know, that could be a security update that needs to be deployed, yeah. or it could just be some kind of functional update as well. Um, the, and then that challenge itself breaks into a couple of parts. How do you know that there's an application update available? How do you know what devices actually need that update? And then lastly, how do you go about updating it? And so today, um, if you fix the first two challenges of knowing the app needs an update, you have to then package the update, deploy that update to the affected machines and monitor that it actually gets installed, as well as go back and repackage your initial application to the latest version so that, you know, you're not constantly yes, chasing your tail, right? Versions. Exactly, yeah. installing old versions that then you didn't, didn't realize you've created another, another kind yeah. of gap in your security posture. So what we'll build with application, the, the application lifecycle tooling is two things to address those issues. The first thing will be an application catalog. Um, so that will yeah. be a curated catalog where, you know, we've taken all of those apps that we see installed commonly across yeah. the estate and we'll put them in a catalog. So IT pros can go into a catalog, find an application. Um, we'll have made sure that app is, you know, tested. There's no security vulnerabilities, for example, in that app. We'll also show the admin the install switches that exist for that app. So they haven't got to go and yeah. find out, you know, all those switches um, so they can find the app and deploy it. So, you know, we've saved IT pros needing to go and package those applications all the time. And then the second part of the feature will be the application updating. Um, and, you know, that will give you visibility of there's an update available, the machines that need it, that it needs to be installed into. And then um, ultimately we'll go through guided scenarios as well to help an IT pro deploy that update to their, their estate. Um, so okay. kind of all all GUI driven, all inside in tune, you know, removing the need for packaging and giving you visibility and workflows to update applications when when updates exist. And so will Microsoft then keep that catalog of apps current with the latest versions that are available from the from the OEM? The, from Absolutely. The, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We'll keep Great. that up today. Yeah. And and I guess you could you could think about this different in terms of from the store. The store is ISVs publishing applications to the store. This is a curated set of applications. So, you know, applications that may never be in this published in the store at all. Um, that we've cu we've curated and published in a in a separate catalog. With okay. I think I think it's upwards of four thousand applications in that catalog as well. And that would probably grow over time as you add more. Yeah, more to it. yeah, 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 yeah. I think what you know, and we're looking at capabilities of if there is no app in there, could you request us to get an app yes, in there? Because we have App Assure today to help with that compatibility. Yes. So you know, we could extend and grow that over time as well. Yeah. How does this new app management capability relate to Winget? Um, so Winget is a an application install. Um, like package manager that the that the Windows Store uses. Um, so, you know, type in Winget and then some some binaries and we'll Betches. pull those directly from the store. Yeah. So so it's kind of it's kind of separate. Um, I mean there may be applications you're installing that leverage Winget, but one's like an application delivery mechanism and the other one is a uh, the catalog and updating mechanism. Okay. Okay. So this is going to be very powerful. Yes, this I yeah. think is, is one area where Intune hasn't got the full set of capabilities we'd all like today. So I think this is going to have a, a big impact. Yeah, there's, there's there's quite a lot of, um, you know, manual effort that IT pros yes. have to go through, you know, yes. and that's, as I say, if they even know that there's an application update available, right? Yeah. So you, you might yeah. not know. Yeah, yeah. Great, great. The next one is cloud certs, and it's extraordinary. The way the way I look at the market is you've got some organizations that have their own PKI infrastructure, and they've got certs deployed to every machine they manage and, and own, and then some organizations have none whatsoever. Yeah. Um, talk to us about the gap you're hoping to fill and what, what Intune will do when it comes to um, publishing 
and distributing and managing certs. Yeah, so this is one that that will come out slightly later in the year. So we're still working on a lot of the design components. But in terms of, I think, you know, direction of travel and strategically what we're trying to achieve here is um, those first set of organizations that you talked about are maintaining certificate infrastructure. So they're deploying, you know, cert servers, um, connectors into Intune, managing cert templates and then deploying them out to clients. And then they're using those certificates for resource authentication or conditional access authentication. And then the other set of customers haven't aren't using any certificates, you know, secure mm. method of access just because the infrastructure is too, um, you know, it's just a, a step too far, I guess, in yeah. terms of complexity for them. Um, so what we're building with uh, the cloud certificate management is really a way to if you like, make that a SaaS service so that we look after the, the complex infrastructure and just build it all straight into Intune for you to be able to deploy certificates securely um, to your endpoints for resource access. So will Intune publish the certificate? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the, that's okay. the plan. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you'll essentially have this whole certificate management lifecycle inside the Intune console without needing to deploy additional infrastructure. The difficult awesome. additional certificate authorities and those certs can be deployed out to any endpoint um that will be across point? yeah that will be a cross-platform solution so that will okay. be for ios android windows and mac so all, all awesome. of the, the core platforms yeah and assuming this is for managed devices only the device has to be enrolled it can't be for a byod a byo device um i'm not sure we've settled on that decision yet so watch this space on that right one. right yeah, I suspect that would be difficult to get get the cert deployed to an unmanaged device, but see what uh, you guys yeah, come up with. Yeah, I mean, there are probably MAM scenarios where you might want to cert, but yeah. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wi-Fi or something like that. Yeah. Okay, so three big improvements from a security perspective: uh, endpoint privilege um, management, the advanced yeah. app management, and cloud certs. And hopefully, yeah. that's good news to all IT professionals because what it should mean, hopefully, is uh, better security by having fewer devices out in the wild with 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 that with that full admin access unnecessarily and then fewer apps that have known vulnerabilities left in them so apps kept yeah. up to date and certs on every machine that can have a cert yeah, yeah. secure resource but, yeah. access yeah awesome so if we move on to the three big things happening then from an employee experience perspective i'm personally really excited about these three um the first one i'd like to ask you about is the advanced analytics mm -hmm. and if you can talk to us about What's the goal here and how far will advanced analytics go looking at an endpoint? Where does it stop short and not trying encroach into the space that Defender or an EDR agent would occupy? Uh, okay, great question. Yeah, yeah. So so the, the real challenge I think we're trying to fix with advanced endpoint analytics, um, I, I, I think about this in terms of end user apathy with IT and we've all been there, right? You know, where <laughs> where where people say, oh, my laptop's <clears throat> rubbish um, and yeah. You know, IT struggle to gain visibility into into that. You know, you end up with a subset of understanding based on those people who raise support tickets. Um, everyone else just, you know, kind of silence up and keeps quiet. Silence, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and IT teams have you know, tried really hard over years to develop custom scripts and we've got like proactive remediation that they can then try and proactively resolve issues. But the real challenge is identifying the issues before they really become a problem, before they come yeah. a support ticket and making sure that experience is great for the end user. Um, yeah. So what we're, what we're doing with advanced endpoint analytics is taking all of the telemetry data that we collect from the endpoints that are Intune managed, applying some machine learning and some AI to that data set, and then being able to surface to IT pros, um, things that we think should be investigated, and we'll be able to correlate that against potential causes and also all of the impacted devices as well. So the first, the first um, area we're really concentrating on with advanced analytics is application reliability. Mm -hmm. um, so giving IT pros insight into um, applications that have crashed, how often yeah. they're crashing, you know, and any correlating activity so you can drive it dive into a device and see like an advanced timeline of everything that's happened so you know that might be an example where the app we we see that an app crashes you know one percent of the time across the the, the estate an application gets updated um, by someone and then that 
incident rate increases you know so we kind of will spot that anomaly and be able to surface up to you that um, users are suffering a poor performance with a particular application that you can investigate and see the correlation so um, you know not waiting for those IT tickets to come in before you realize that something else happened that you you know IT service tests probably weren't aware of an app updating for example and then joining the dots you know we're trying to use some machine learning to proactively do that for IT pros. My mind is racing ahead to thinking about a scenario where you got a quiet Friday afternoon on the service desk and you could get your uh, your service desk team to say, you could give them a list and say, here's a list of 20 or 30 people who are having slow performance or having an yeah, issue with their yeah. machines. Um, run a script or, or contact the user to do this or push out an update or something. Yeah, yeah. And, the I, user. And, and, and I think kind of our long term thoughts on advanced endpoint analytics are not just about being able to surface the anomalies and the problems, but also give you some suggestions about how to fix them as well, yes, you know, yes, um, yes. and so, yeah, so re really so, helping that IT pro. And so what we're, what we're not trying to do with advanced analytics is detect vulnerabilities. No, on the device. no, that's, that's the endpoint it's a, agent. It's a, yeah. It's about anomalies in end user experience, really. Experience. Yeah. 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 Awesome. That's awesome. Cause historically, if you need, if you wanted that, you needed a third party tool. Yes. to do those analytics and they were yeah. big heavy tools okay yeah. yeah that's awesome and then closely related to that is the remote help feature so mm -hmm. i know you guys got you guys got bashed over the head a little bit last year for the the first launch of that product <laughs> so tell us about v2 and, and what we can expect to see yeah um, i mean so comes out. remote help is is the first product that we released um last year and we made the announcement last um last september at ignite about our advanced management capabilities. We were we were calling it then now in Tune Suite and Remote Help was the first one that yeah. we launched. Um, so I think the first thing to say just in terms of licensing, remote help forms part of the Intune suite. So you get right. the you get it as you know now included in yeah. in that Intune suite. You can still buy it individually or you yeah. or you can purchase it as per part of the suite. Um, and really remote help is designed to enable IT people and support desk people to support um, a device no matter where it is. You know, you can no longer rely on being able to just walk down the corridor and find a user who's raised a ticket. You know, they, yeah. everyone's working on any device in multiple locations. So it's a fully cloud based solution um, that is integrated into Intune. So you can do full RBAC models, full auditing as well. Um, and some of the enhancements we have coming then on remote help um, in the next couple of months will be some integrated chat. Um, we're going yeah, to build. Cool. Yeah, so you know you won't need to have a separate Teams client or something open. You can do, do it all directly from inside there. Um, some additional conditional access capabilities to make sure that you know you're approving remote access to devices. Um, and on the roadmap, we've also got unattended rem remote support as well. So today it's yes. interactive with a user, but you know you might have devices in remote factories, you know that are yeah. kind of standalone shared devices like that you need machines. some exactly to do some remediation yeah. on without there being any user presence so unattended support um, and then we also have um, remote help for android um, coming out soon as well so you'll be able to offer remote support for users on their on their android devices as well and my understanding is with the android devices you'll be able to go a lot further in reaching into the device because of the apis that have been exposed by android yeah as correct. opposed to yeah. ios which is a lot a lot, um, a lot more constrained in terms of the apis yeah. we can access yeah that's great. So we can access a machine or a device and on attended mode. And, and if I understand correctly, we can also record the entire remote support session. Is um, that right? Or is that coming? Um, I think that's coming. I'd have to double check though to confirm that. For okay. You. Yeah. Because yeah. that would be useful from a, an auditability perspective. Yes. Yeah. And you've also um, got a, clip, okay. a clipboard yeah. feature, I believe. Is that right? Yeah. So you'll be able to copy and paste commands in and out of the remote help session as well. So, you know, that's useful for IT, IT teams yeah. that have got long strings of commands that they want to execute, being able yeah. to paste those into the remote session. Um, and we're also working on um, integrating that remote help experience directly into the Intune console. So it's integrated today in terms of starting the session, but we launch um, an, an external binary to be able to then run that session. Um, we're looking at how can we integrate that entirely into the Intune platform so you stay in the Intune console as well. 
So can either party initiate a remote help session, the end user or the service desk person? Uh, no, it's it's service desk initiated. Yeah, service so, desk initiated. Not the, yeah. the end user can't initiate it. No, but we do have service now integration coming out as well. So if a service, yes. if a user, if a customer is using service now, a user raises a support ticket in the troubleshooting blade, the IT pro will see the service now ticket for a particular user and can then directly from there initiate the remote help session to awesome. connect to the user. You know, show me what your what the problem is. Yeah. I think we should do another webinar another day to talk about ServiceNow and Intune integration because I think okay. there's going to be a ton of interest in that, a lot of lot of interest. Um, and one of the one of the things on remote help that I'm very excited about is the fact that you can use that feature on an unenrolled BYO device. Uh, correct. Yes. Yes. You can you can support enrolled devices today, but we also support unenrolled devices as well. That's huge. Yeah. That's huge. Because a lot of yeah. our customers are telling us, and particularly for their their smartphones and tablets, um, increasingly BYOD is the model. Yeah. And so the more we can allow them to have some security and a good support experience for that BYOD configuration, the better. Um, which is a nice segue to the last topic, the last topic, which is the Intune for MAM or the micro VPN into a Intune, BYOD uh, device. MAM tunnel, we're calling MAM it. MAM tunnel. Yeah. Thank you. MAM, MAM tunnel. tunnel. Yeah. Um, that's super exciting. So tell us a little bit about that. So, so we've had uh, mobile application management for a number of years. So it yeah. lets you for BYO unenrolled devices still protect your data. So for an application, um, either a Microsoft app, which has the, the, the uh, MAM capabilities built in, and we also have an SDK if anyone wants to wrap their own apps, um, you can ensure that that app requires a password or some kind of authentication to open pin number, sure data is correct, encrypted and also manage how you want data to ingress and egress out of that app so block the clipboard for example don't let you save files to the personal device um, so great for controlling access to apps where the data is then you know say a SaaS app like exchange online um, but with tunnel for mobile application management what we'll do is have a per app VPN capability again configured from within Intune so that maybe you have an internal intranet page um, you configure your MAM policy, you configure your tunnel policy for the endpoints, and the user would say open edge, which is a MAM enabled application, go to a URL, which happens to be internal. The application will then securely authenticate and stand up the okay, micro gotcha. VPN yeah, back to the on-premises platform. So this is all from an unmanaged device. Um, the user can access the intranet content, and then um, when they close the application, they can't copy, if you configure it, if you want to, can't copy the data out and we close the VPN tunnel down um, as soon as the application is closed as well. So really allowing BYO devices to connect to, to connect securely to on-premises resources. That's awesome. I think that's going to be very, very popular. So now we can have uh, a set of security policies wrapped around all the office applications today, like yep. Teams and Outlook and Excel and all that. Now we can do the same for custom apps with that yep, SDK. SD, SDK. Yeah. Can we even enable SSO, single sign-on for those custom apps? Yes, they are. Yeah, we yeah, can. they will. They will. That's... Yeah. If you're if you're AAD authenticating, you've got a token on the inside the app. Your AAD token inside the app. So Edge, for example, um, would then single sign-on to the in internal resources using the same token. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Um, and have, has that capability been pre-built into any commercial off-the-shelf apps? Like, are we aware of any Adobe apps or anything that, like that, that? That's that's a great question. And to be honest, I, I don't know. I mean, there are the MAM capability is has been built into. There's, the, you know, if you go into Intune and create a MAM policy and select the apps, you'll see a very long list of um, yeah. both Microsoft and third-party apps. Um, how many of them are then? you know, accessing on-prem resources or would need to, to the leverage the tunnel. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. But. Stephen, last minute, this has been great. Last minute, tell us about the rollout schedule and how people can get started if they want to test or trial or poke around with some of these features and their own tenant. Um, yeah, so a couple of the features are available today. So um, advanced endpoint analytics and tunnel for remote man remote tunnel for MAM and remote help, 
mixed in two products there. Yeah. Um, they're available today. Um, okay. Endpoint privilege management um, will be available next month. So April is the expected release of that. And then app management and certificate management are coming later in this year. So second half okay. of the year. Um, Great. And in terms of getting started, getting started. Um, you can anyone can go with a with a tenant as long as you're a billing admin or a global admin on that tenant can go to the Microsoft Admin Center admin.microsoft.com um, go to products and services find Intune Suite which is all of those six products we talked about packaged up into a single SKU and start a trial license and that trial is um, 250 licenses valid for 90 days. Awesome. So admin.microsoft.com. Yeah, and you can get 250 trial licenses in your tenant for 90 days for 90 days to check these yeah. out. That's fantastic. Stephen, thank you. This has been outstanding. Yeah, you're A welcome. Good short uh, overview. I hope this has been useful to all our audience here this morning uh, or this afternoon, whichever time zone you're in. So thank you again, Stephen, and thank you for the great work you do. This this product thank has you. gone from being a small product to an enormous platform over the last 10 years. So yeah, kudos yeah. to you and the team for what you guys are doing with Intune. Great. Thanks, everyone. Right. Thank you all.